We're glad to know you're still there and watching the run-up. Uh, last week, we started a conversation about the entertainment industry, how it has grown. In fact, on Friday, uh, the last thing we played was uh, the vice president dancing to the songs of some of our musicians. While on the one hand, we were applauding him that at least he knows the names of these uh, musicians and he sings their songs, he knows their songs, meaning that he knows them and uh, is also trying to sell them out to the outside world. We also looked at the point where the government seems not to care about what happens in the entertainment industry. But in spite of that, that industry has grown to proportions that were not expected uh, some years ago. Now I have in the studio here with me someone who has been behind the camera for a very long time, almost two decades I think, started with documentaries and then moved into mainstream movie making and all that. A director and a producer and so many things. If you just mention one role in the, in the movie industry, he's sure to have a hand in that. We're glad to welcome you this, uh, today to the run-up, King Asu. Welcome to the run-up. Thank you very much, Agaji. I'm so happy to be here. Okay, let's start with that. Um, just you as a person, how, how you became a, a movie producer now. I've, I've already told them you started with documentaries and all that, but you got to Lagos and this is king now. <laughs> I think that was uh, nearly 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, I just took the decision to make films. I, I fell in love with movie making and I said, okay, you know what, I wanted to make films. So when I left the university in uh, 2003, the University of Calabar, where I, by the way, majored in microbiology. <laughs> I had nothing to do yeah, with film. Through Niger, man. Yes, <laughs> you know. So upon leaving the university, I went to the Cameroons from there to Amsterdam and later on back to Nigeria. And I just headed straight to Lagos and, uh, you know, just came and I said, when I come, I would decide, in my head, I wanted to be a writer. Mm. I came in, and the first person I met was NSOB. I tried to meet NSOB. Then uh, the Actors uh, Guild had an office somewhere in uh, Nobi Street in Suruleria, you know. And uh, I had a script already written, one or two scripts, and somebody read the script at uh, Winnie's Hotel. We used to have a hotel somewhere called Winnie's Hotel, where actors wait for, to be hired and all that. Then Suru Larry, you know. So somebody read this and told me the person that would like this script is uh, Teko Benson. It looks like an action movie. At that time, Teko Benson was a reigning actor, yeah. direct, actor, film director, uh, action film director, you know. So uh, they directed me to his office, number two, Aguda Street then. So I, I got there and I met Teko and he read it and he laughed. Uh, because I wrote as a novice, and when Teko <laughs> looked at it, was like, hey, I think this just it, it, it came across to him like uh, a kind of kindergarten straight, uh, script. And he asked me, "Would you like to do this?" And I said, "Yes, that's why I'm here." So he asked me if I could write for, I could write a series, and I said, "Yes, I, I'll try." So he gave me some heads up like that, and I. I went back, I started writing, I came, he looked at it again, he laughed, he said, you could do better, you know. And then he told me something, he said, God had told me, when you were leaving my office the other day, God told me that I should work with you, mm. you know. So that's how my journey started. He employed me as uh, his uh, studio manager, he had a studio then called uh, TFP Global Network, Global Film Product. it was a production company. And of course, you know, 10, five, uh, 20 years ago, that name, Teko Benson, was uh, one of the best. It was quite a name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he has uh, survived the industry to you today. Yeah. He's still the very, very sound director. I must give it to him, you know. So I started my journey in the industry from Teko Benson. And then after that, I, I think I was with him for one year, Blessing Ebe mm. came and took over from there. I think from Teko Benson, I moved to B Concept Production, where I started as a... Uh, production manager, from production manager to editor. By the way, Teko Benson trained me as an editor. Mm. I started perfecting. Uh, from there, I started editing for B Concept Production. Mm -hmm. I started far back uh, from um, a, a TV series, then like uh, uh, Disclosure. We had Disclosure series. We had season one, season two, season three. Uh, after Disclosure, I think we took interest. We did Lucky Wives. 
mm. and Lucky Wise was a bang at the time. Yeah. You know, Lucky Wise, I, I, I graduated to a, uh, uh, an assistant director and editor. So all through the uh, seasons, I did uh, Lucky Wise with Blessing Igbe. So I stuck with Blessing because she's a very thorough producer, very thorough director. You know, that I, 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 that's why I wasn't surprised when she was recently uh, called as one of the Oscar judges, just recently, yeah. you know. So oh. I, I stuck with her because the, the industry had its problems that are still there till today. Part of uh, those problems is discipline. And I saw in Blessing a very disciplined director. So I, I wanted to, you know, walk the rope through the tight yeah. way. Now, I didn't want to be a lousy director and all those things we hear in the industry. I didn't want to do them because uh, I was a man combining uh, clergy work with uh, filmmaking. It, it was the most difficult <laughs> it, person, it, it kind was, of person I, to I can imagine that. Yeah. A clergy and in the entertainment, the yeah. same worlds apart. Yeah. In fact, that, that's my biggest problem being a filmmaker. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> I, if we have time, we'll go back to how you manage that. But from all the things you have said, it's like everybody who goes into the entertainment industry is more like a self-taught person, a self-made uh, person and all that. But we heard even with the complaints uh, from the industry that the government was not doing much for the industry. We heard when the last administration was here, I'm talking about the administration of uh, Good Luck Jonathan, mm -hmm. that there was a grant that was given to the entertainment industry. How is he, okay, first of all, confirm for us that it was true. And if that was true, how easy was it to access that grant that was given to the entertainment industry? Uh, you know, at that time, this was 2014 or thereabout. I can't remember. As yeah, I but stand to be time. corrected. Yeah, uh, there was truly a, a grant. Okay. There was. How much was it? There was. Uh, I think it was up to two billion naira or okay. so. Yeah. Uh, or 30 billion. I'm, I'm, I stand to be corrected. It was handed over to the Bank of Industry. Okay. There was a, a grant. And uh, a few producers, a few genuine producers were able to access. I think uh, we were able to access to, I can't give details uh, now, but I know we were able to access. I know a few other producers who got the money. So there was actually a grant, thanks to that good luck, Jonathan's administration. There was something like that, you know. But um, to tell you the truth, when, we, when I was sent by my boss then to go to Abuja, and uh, uh, do the finishing of the grant. So when I went there, we, we got something. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, I think uh, Blessing Igbe and a few other people were the only producers who got that grant and used it to do what it was meant for. So there were people who went and took that grant and left Surulere straight up. They came and rented houses in the island and started living. Mm -hmm. They never made films. They, they were supposed to be a grant to make a film. But were they, were they producers or they were... They were producers. Producers, producers accessed it and used it for their personal interest. And the government had no plan in place for follow-up. You know, when you take a grant, there's supposed to be like a department to check. Mm -hmm. if uh, It's like a loan, you, you know, even if it was a grant. Yeah. We were not expected to pay back, mm -hmm. you know. It was just to aid the industry. That was the first time government made that kind of move. But did it, did it help the industry? It helped. Somewhere? It helped. It helped a lot of people. Even if some it was personal, but that grant helped. But I think that after Jonathan, I don't think it was continued. Maybe it remained in the bank of industry. I don't know how it continued, but I know that a lot of people who access it never used it for what it was meant to be. Maybe it died down, or maybe it's still existing. For now, I, I really can't give you that update now how there was it a grant. exist and you don't know about it at least you could have <laughs> known about it but not able to access well it. those who can access it may know that it exists <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay but you know people have been saying the industry has grown without without, let without me government say, funding yeah Fair without enough. government funding yeah. let me not even say with or without mm. just without government funding uh, how do you think that funding will really because on the one hand some people say government needs to fund it. On the other hand, some people are saying when government begins to fund it all the time, there might be interference that will make the, uh, the industry uh, slow down instead of growing the way it is growing right now. Mm. So, but if they have to fund it, in what ways do you think the government should fund the entertainment industry that will make it better? Just the same way, grants. Just give grants. Yeah, grants, yeah. If you go to South Africa, there are grants. There are production grants for films. 
Although I think in South Africa it favors women, uh, female producers more. You know, you just go, you access the phone, and you make your film. Because what we, the the why the film industry is suffering even till now and is still struggling. Can I don't think that that, uh, that massive uh, blowing has happened. It has not. But you are, we are, we are second, getting there. You're the second in the entire world. You're the second Bollywood in volume. Well, in volume. There's a difference between volume and quality of work. Okay. Yes. That I agree. Yes, there's a difference between volume and quality. The volume of films produced, yes. We can claim the second position or, or third or third. I think the second, uh, uh, yeah, second after third. that, yeah, Bollywood. But in terms of quality, you, you can't equate. So, and you know that that is where the funding comes in. Because okay. if you want to tell, there are certain stories you want to tell because of the kind of CGI work involved, you know, the kind of effects and all that, you can't really, some of the CGI works are really, really expensive. Like when we did the Ten Virgins, we did the Ten Virgins and the entire scene where the, the devil and the archangel met in, in, in heaven and all that, we, we had just uh, 30 extras that needed to be like 1,000. And we needed CGI to do that. Mm. And I can tell you that one minute, as at that time, one minute of CGI was like 6 million. One, one minute. minute, one minute to do that multiplication. It was crazy. Whoa. Go and watch the Ten Virgins. You, you, you see. I have it. watched it. Uh -huh. I have watched so, the Ten uh, Virgins. I have watched. Uh, Blessing Egbe directed it. I was the assistant director, and we, we, we. It okay. Was, it was. It was. So very what, what are the what are the lapses you see in the entertainment industry? Because it has grown, yes, but it could do better. Like yes. you just said, quality, yes. Yes. quantity is different from quality. Yes, as you said it. What are the things that you think? The Nigerian industry, entertainment industry, has to grow in that will make it better. You know, because uh, it it can't always be because of lack of money yeah. you're doing. A sh I, I would like I would like to business. see collaboration with foreign partners. That will help. Why is it not happening now? I would like to see collaboration with foreign partners. You see, if uh, we have, for example, uh, we 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 have. The TV series, the serials, we have the Big Bang action movies and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, this the, the film is segmented into different. You may want to do documentaries. Like, I, I had a lot of passion for documentaries. I started mm -hmm. with, I did Kings and Their Kingdoms mm -hmm. in 2010. Yeah. You know, but somebody clearly told me that documentaries don't pay. So, we'd like to see a situation where there can be collaborations. For example, if you do a documentary in Nigeria, you should be able to access places like National Geo Wild. And all those places, you know, and and and, and give them there. How is it that you are able to access Netflix now, for instance, but for other things you are not able to access? Even accessing the Netflix is the the, the there's a whole lot involved, a whole lot involved, you know. We come, let's come back home. All right, let's look at <laughs> this. Okay. Yeah, the cinema mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria, the the entire release chain in Nigeria. Yeah is shrouded in a whole lot of secrecy. Those who already know the way don't like to tell the others. All right, so they, they prefer to keep it to themselves. If, for example, you are the first person who ran to uh, uh, a particular company to sell a movie and you make money, instead of coming to tell others, they try to now turn around and make themselves the, Go the mediator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a whole lot of that chain problem of, on, on distribution. Even in the, the, the cinema industry now, when you release a movie on cinema, it takes a whole lot. You have to go through this. You may have to wait for... Uh, in fact, I think they have started even giving turns. You wait for your turn and all that. That is if you are able to even break through the chain. So there's also a Milokon in... Yes. Uh, in, yes. <laughs> in so we, we have uh, producers who... You know, they, they, they have the cloud, the financial cloud. They have, they have been able to break through, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, there are producers and there are producers, there are directors and there are directors in cadres like that. And we keep going up and up and up until you, you are people like uh, Kunle Afalayan, people like Blessing Igbe, people like Zenteko Benson, you know, some of that. There are a lot of young, wonderful directors and producers coming up now who are accessing funding maybe through banks and other sponsors elsewhere. So I know that some banks, like EcoBank, had a, 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 an internal a, a, a funding for films. I don't know if they are still doing it. Some banks aided productions in the past. Some banks aided. But one of the major problems was the producers themselves. 
where you get a, a loan or a soft loan or a grant and you don't do what you're supposed to do. So that made people who were even interested to, to withdraw their interest. But I think that gradually it's going there because if you, if you go and check the cinemas now, you see a whole lot of beautiful, wonderful Nigerian movies that go yeah. up to 100 million and above. Yes, I, I've, seen, I've seen movies that have really interested me and mm. all that. But how is the partnership between the industry itself and the private individuals? How, how is, okay, how is the involvement of private individuals in movie making? Apart from banks, apart from the government and all that, are private individuals keying into what you're doing in the, in the entertainment industry? They are, but slowly so. The reason is that uh, people need to be sure. Uh, yes, you may love films, but you don't want to throw your money. Mm -hmm. and you're not sure of getting it back. Mm -hmm. Movie making is a business. Let's forget the entertainment aspect. This is a business, a huge, it's a multi-billion era company uh, ex establishment you know in nigeria here it has taken over two million nigerians off the streets mm -hmm. so it's huge and that's why thanks to good luck jonathan he tried to see that he, he recognized that fact you know where's the, the yes where, where's where's the where's the employment so the, the movie industry is taking helping a lot of people to get something to do you know because in, in when you look at look at the end credit of a film you're going to see that there are over 200 and something departments, you know, working behind the scenes to make a movie to happen. So they are all earning money, bit by bit by bit, and they are able to take care of their families. So I would have loved to see uh, a situation where the government takes interest to fund the, the film industry. Come in, set up a massive, in fact, even a, a, like a bank, a bank for that purpose, for entertainment alone. You understand? And then you just... Because what is happening with the Bank of Industry since after this money was released, there's a whole lot of man, no man. If you don't know anybody there yet, trust me, you can't access the phone. There are some people who might feel that, um, except that you've just said it, that there's a lot of money in the movie industry and all that, they might not know there's money. So if a film, just, just give or take, a film is well made and it goes to the cinemas and everything, uh, about how much can you make from a film? That is well made. You cannot quantify. Uh, try. <laughs> Just try. You cannot. If you put in good money, all right, and make a good film, you, you can quantify. And why I said I'm saying you cannot quantify is that a movie never stops selling. A film never stops selling. Mm. You keep selling forever. Like till today, people still ask for lucky wives. Mm -hmm. today. So, if uh, what would just happen is maybe the depreciation value because of the years, yeah. uh -huh, how long, how old the film is. Like, if you release fresh, it can be going for as much as, like, if TV stations want to take the, a whole lot of uh, this thing involved, then after some time, as, it, as time keeps going, the depreciation value goes. But a movie never stops selling. So, you, there is no way you can quantify how much you stand to make. It's like forever. Uh, but um, I don't want to live forever. If I want to invest <laughs> in a movie, I should know that. Okay, if I'm investing 10 million, for instance. Then I, I, let me mention another thing that has been a source of challenge for private individuals mm -hmm. coming in to make films. Uh, you know, the Nigerian society is a, a cash and carry yeah. society. People want to put in their money and get it next week. Mm -hmm. It's not like that with films. It takes a whole lot of time to make a good film. That's why if you look at the industry, it's segmented. There's the Lagos industry, there's the Asaba industry, mm -hmm. there's the Yoruba industry. You know, it's segmented like that. That's why African Magic too have Ibu, Yoruba, Hausa, mm -hmm. and all that is segmented. So the, the, the process, the time you put in to make a film is all not the same. There are, these industries I've mentioned, there are places where you go and they can make a movie mm. in three days, in seven days. There are some people that can make a movie for a year, six months, and all that. So the time, the money put in is all uh, different. So b why? Because it is still survival of the fitex. Everybody is just trying to survive. But there are still very thorough filmmakers who get proper funding, and they take their time and make a movie. So if you come and fund it, you have to understand that it takes time for mm. moving money to come. Yeah, just being careful. You don't want to say the <laughs> <laughs> an amount. But okay, let's say if you put in 100 million, you can make two. 
to 200 million yeah. in the space of let's say one year yeah like a because, year because yes said so you don't so come and put in a hundred million and the next day you are calling the producer where's my money <laughs> it's not a grana granota and banana there, there, were, <laughs> there were times you will go into a studio to make music for instance and you're doing five or eight like in my case make eight uh, songs in one session the instrumentation will be inside that session. Yes. The voicing will be there. Yes. The mastering will be there inside mm. eight hours. Mm. Today, you take like three months to do one song. And you say it's a single. And you make your money. Mm -hmm. People were making... Uh, yeah, because again, you know that the truth of the matter is that there are more sales outlets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are more you can... There's YouTube. You can make your, film, your, your music, your film. You just put it somewhere. Okay. So there's a whole lot. Uh, All right. I would have... Of, I would have it is uncommon. Uh, so I will encourage anybody who wants to invest in the film industry to come forward. It's a large industry. We want it to blow the way the music industry has blown. Mm. Now in, in the world, all over the world, you cannot mention two countries in terms of music without mentioning, without mentioning Nigeria. Nigeria. We are taking over. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we want it to happen to the film industry too. Okay, we've been talking with King Asu, a producer, a director, a script writer that didn't make it as a script writer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I made it as, as an editor. Yes, editor <laughs> and everything. But we're glad to have him and he's been able to expose us to the fact that there's a lot of money in the entertainment, not just movie making, in the entertainment industry. Why not adopt an artist today whether a, a writer a producer or a singer or something adopt someone as it were and then make sure you sponsor that person uh, in the craft that the person does employment will be there money will be in so many pockets and all that but we've had a pleasure having you today we hope that uh, when we want to seek advice on movie making we can come to you and get free advice we like free things Anytime. in Nigeria. <laughs> okay. So, King Asu, thank you so much thank for coming you so on much. the program. I'm, I'm glad to be here. The program continues after the news. Uh, don't go away. It's still the run-up.